Uh, good afternoon, everybody. It's 11 o'clock, and uh, I'd like to share a few things with you guys. Excuse me one second. Okay. Anyhow. I was thinking a lot last night on this, uh, um, somebody shared something about graphite, and, uh, you know, we know this is something that they've been putting in somebody, okay, called graphite, and then, uh, then another friend of mine, he's a, uh, farmer up in Iowa. Anyhow, he was sharing a while back about as he was out there combining his combine, his tractor that pulls all the corn, gets all the corn gathered up in there. And he said the dust that he got off of his crop it was like dark looking, dark looking. And now this is somebody you guys who's been farming for 30 years, okay? Long time. So, you know, when he says he sees things like that, you know, if you listen. And then the other day, we were in, uh, we were in, um, looking at some, you know, the prices for mobile campers for somebody that we knew. And, you know, what they could possibly look at getting, you know, used and be fairly decent. While we were in there, we just went the one day and looked for them and gave them a ballpark idea. And uh, while we were there, the people that were showing us the campers, they were, uh, they were saying, you know, how this black dust is getting all over their campers. And uh, I'm like, you know, because I've noticed in the sky where I'd see the white chemtrails, then sometimes I'd see black on top of it. Like they laid a layer of white with black. You know, you can clearly see it going, you know, miles and miles across the sky. You know, and then it would, you know, come down like a veil. And this is the stuff, like, a friend farmer that's got it on his tractor, his combine. And then the people were talking about all over their campers because they have to keep them clean when they're showing them. And uh, I'm going to provide the link, okay? And this is where they're trying to get people to put, they put one cloth and then they put another one on top of it. And as they're describing it, you know, we're in two masks. And then later in the video, you're going to see where they describe where graphite, you know, it's black. And they put it on. And it, when it comes down and it gets on the mask, the first mask, okay, then it's being breathed in and out, in and out. Then as it's being transferred into the second layer of the mask, okay, it comes in thinner than it does on the outside okay and then by the time it goes past that this is what this guy's showing he's using tape peeling it showing how it's looking different each time and then as it gets past that he said it turns into graphene he goes now you have graphene which is a very strong material this is what they use like on making hockey puck or hockey sticks tennis rackets and it's flexible and it's a raw material like a metal that they use for even the military you guys the uh, technology that they're using today on people you guys it's it's a military operation and you heard Trump when he said when this is coming out um, in the beginning of the year before he went, came out of office so it was called Operation Warp Speed. Warp Speed. W A R P Speed. S P E E D. And the Bible says Satan makes war. 
W-A-R minus the P on the remnant of the woman's seed. S-E-E-D minus the P. War on the seed, warp speed. It was a military operation. He said it. Remember, Satan turns everything upside down and he twists things. But you heard it. And sometimes you have to put things together. And this is what's, uh, this is what's happening, you guys. And uh, most people are not aware of what we're experiencing. Like today, I don't see any heavy spraying going on. But, uh, what a place, you know? I mean, we're living in a really wild time right now, you guys. We're living in the biblical times, the biblical end. And not everybody knows it, or can they see it. Um, they got, remember I was telling you how some of the names on cars they have? One's called, uh, 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 Soul by Kia, S-O-U-L. Now, these aren't just coincidences that they're coming out at these times. Soul. Another one's called, uh, um, Focus. You know, in other words, they focused, focus. And, uh, another one's called Escape. You know, and these things are in the Bible, okay, that tell you these are the times we're in. And, you guys, these are the end times. It's not a coincidence. All these names are in there. Just like in the Bible, there's there's uh, the word fourth, F-O-R-T-H. And now they got another newer car called fourth, where it says, come forth, okay, come forth. And, uh. It's in there like 4,444 times. You know, it's like over and over and over so many times. 4,444 times. It's just crazy. But, uh, now they got a new one. It's an electric car. Electric. Because I, I just did a little research on it, and it's an electric car. It's supposed to get like 300 miles on a full charge. And you don't hear it, and it goes from zero to 60 in seconds, you know. But anyhow, you guys, what we're seeing right now, especially that stuff I told you when it's breathed on the first layer of the mask, then when you keep breathing through that, and then it gets into the second layer of the mask, it's being refined. It's like putting it through a filter. You know, when you drink your water at home, you got a filter underneath the sink or something to refilter your water. To where it cleanses it, you know? Well, that's kind of what I think is happening. You know, because if you can't get people to come in and be your lab rat right at home, all you got to do is come out with the laws telling you to do it. Everybody get as many people doing it at home while they fly over and dump it on you. You know, I know it sounds crazy, but anyhow. I'm going to read a little bit here for you guys, okay? A little bit out of uh, Isaiah 20. Yes, we know Jesus came here. He came in the flesh. God came in the flesh. And to uh, wash away our sins. To give us, uh, to forgive us for our sins and our iniquities. Okay. That we can be forgiven for our sins. That's why John the Baptist came. Remember, two days ago, 2,000 years is two days to Christ. That's why John the Baptist came uh, saying, repent, you know, repent of your sins because there's one coming after me. And Jesus came saying the same thing, repent. And uh, today we're seeing where, you know, we can sit there and say things to people. And they can't get it. Like, you know, the 46 chromosomes. Me, I noticed in 2000 when the uh, Twin Towers went down, when Bush read Psalms 23. Then 10 years later when they built the new tower to replace the two, Obama read 46. 
Now that's our DNA. You have 20 feet from your mother and you have 20 feet from your dad, which is 46. And, uh, you know, for all this to be happening like that, you know, there's like, yeah, and nobody was talking about it. And then um, in the Bible where Jesus tells the Pharisees in Matthews, he says uh, that uh, destroyed this temple, and he was talking about his body. We know this, but the Pharisees didn't know it. Just like the people today in the churches, they don't know today. And I try to tell them, hey, you know you have 46 chromosomes. And they're, no, like it's not a big deal to them. And you even ask them, do you know how many years it took to build the temple back then? No, they don't even know that because they know the birth, but they don't know. I'm talking pastors and churches in uh, the 46 years. And uh, King James and Second Kings, I think it's Second Kings or maybe it's First Kings, where they tell you right in there, because it's in there twice. One time it says in Hebron, he, he uh, was ruled as a king seven years. But in Second Kings or First Kings, it says he ruled seven years and six months. And then in uh, Jerusalem, 33 years. So, which is 40.6 years. 46, which is the DNA. Also, Christ was supposed to come through King David. You know? He was supposed to the reign that was going to be the you know he would bring in from the seed of David uh, that's where his kingdom would be established through Christ 40.6 you know what are the odds there are no odds this is what God did God caused everything to be what it is you know it's a lot and then you go to Luke chapter 23 verse 46 that's where Jesus on the cross he had 23 from his mother all right his worldly mom but we know the Holy Spirit came over Mother Mary which is God and uh, the Holy Spirit and uh, conceived Jesus and then on, he's on the cross at Luke 23 46 giving the spirit back to the Father you know this is all in the Bible man it's like wow it, it confirms everything, even everything we know and what we see. And oh well, you know, well, you guys, things are happening, right? I want to read. Uh, we see all this happening. You guys, the ships out at sea, this ain't gonna happen again. That we're really, really further in this than everybody knows. Okay. I want to read something else to you here, you guys. Nahum 7. I went over it before. I'm going to do it again. The Lord is good. A stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows them that trust in him. Okay? So, you guys, all these things that are happening, they're meant to happen. They're going to happen. And it's going to happen perfectly. Even uh, just trust in him. Because... He's in fully control, and actually, it's already done. Um, you know, no harm will come near you, just like his word says. Those that fully trust in him. You know, you can't, you might say it with your mouth, but you better really trust in him. See, people that sit there and say, well, they got guns, you know, because it's their Second Amendment. See, to me, they don't fully trust in him. Because if they did, they wouldn't be worried about a gun, especially if they know what time it is. People are going to be tried, you guys. They're going to be tried. And, uh, they, it's just the way everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to. Alright. I'm going to read a little bit here in, uh, off of Ezekiel chapter 20, okay? It talks about Israel's past sins. Their past sins. Okay, I'm going to start off. You know, it talks about it in 20. I recommend reading it all, okay, you guys? It talks about 
um, how he's, God's going to scatter them all over the nation, scatter them, and then he's going to come back later and gather them and bring them back. I've had dreams about this, you know, being brought back. I also, you guys, I get a lot of attacks, man. I get a lot of attacks, which, yeah, I was looking that up, and uh, there's, there's, they say it could be a lot of witchcraft, sorcery, stuff like that that they're doing here today, coming against those that, you know, they know are speaking, putting light on what they're doing, you know, what they're what their source is. You know, we're shedding light to people they don't want people to know. Okay, I'm going to start off at, uh, twenty ten. I remember I was telling you about those cards called Fourth. Okay, the name of them. All right, 2010. Wherefore, I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes and I showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not after my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which a man do, and he shall live in them. And my Sabbath they greatly polluted. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. I'm at 14. You guys, when I read these things, these are an example of how they weren't. But I also want everybody to know we weren't either. You know, we were totally uh, worshiping idols. You know, and they're whether it's country music, whether it's uh, something, somebody on television, they're idols, is what they are. When the news, when they talk about somebody that was shot or killed, all of a sudden he becomes an idol. You know, and they're all uh, up in an uproar over something that they created. You know. Um, how they worship like it where the twin towers were put down all those people that were died in the towers they put their names in it all the way around it it's a hole in the ground they walk around in circles looking at all the names worshipping is what they're doing they don't know it but they're worshipping it yeah we're not supposed to be doing these things let the dead take care of the dead in other words, the living do but follow God. That's why Jesus said, follow me. The dead will take care of the dead. You know, oh, but first let me go bury. No, he said, follow me. You know, it, it's just that, it's that important. You know, the word of God. It really is that important. But yet, people don't take it that important like they should. But I would walk for my name's sake, and it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. Yes, yeah, we are, we're saved by the blood of Christ, okay? All who call on him and believe in him are saved by him. But yes, yeah, you know, you've read in scriptures where it's written in there, and it says, If you don't pick up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. It says it in there, okay? If you don't love me above your your flesh family, you're not worthy of me. If you don't love me above all, that's the first and greatest commandment. And pick up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of me. Yeah. Remember he says there's a lot of them with their mouth, but their heart is far from me. This will change your life, man, when you know the truth. And you will follow Christ. You'll put him above everything. And then you'll die to all this. You know? And it's like, you know, I don't even like being out in it. I got to go down, pick up a few things that I'm going to make today, cook, and uh, that's it. I may even just get a salad and have a salad. But, uh, yeah, that's it.
I don't like going out in there, you know, because what this place is, man, it's what it's become. You know, it's a cesspool. It's a cesspool of wickedness, filth. You guys, we've all uh, been in it, done it, and blindly even, as they are. But by the grace of God, you know, we've been able to receive what we can't get them to receive. You know, and Jesus even said, if they wouldn't hear me, they're not going to hear you either. And this is what's happening. They can't hear what we're saying. All right. Because they despised my judgments and walked not in the statutes but polluted my Sabbath, their hearts went after their idols. This place is full of idols, man. You know, tons of them, man. They're on stages. Uh, even, like, look at how they idolize Trump. You know, these presidents and everything. They made monuments of uh, Washington and South Dakota. Where people have been worshipping that stuff for a long time. And every year they go out there and they worship. Um, they praise those that uh, laid their lives down for their countries. But they made a monument of it. Uh, and they don't even know when they go stand there at a flag. They're idolizing it. They idolize their flag. Not just America, but all nations. You know, it's like that everywhere. Yeah, and then when you separate from it and you point these things out, people get offended at you. You know, just like Jeremiah when he prophesied things, boy, they hated him. They said he's worthy to die. You know. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But... I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in my statutes of your father, neither observe my judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments, and do them, and hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between you and me, me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord God. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them. Which, if a man do, he shall live, even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Remember you guys, 40 years. Forty years they walked through the wilderness in the desert. Forty years. This is why God rained manna down on them for forty years out there in the wilderness. You know? Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted my hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgments but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths and their eyes were after their father's idols. Okay, you guys get an idea here. Okay, and here at 38, um, or 37, this is where Jesus is saying, I will cause you to pass under the rod. I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will purge out, of, out from among you the rebels. In other words, separate us. Purge. It's like it says, how much more will the blood of Christ Purge you, you know, from, from doing, you know, ungodly things. How much more will the blood of Christ purge you from these things in this world? You know, to, to serving the living God, you know. 
and I don't think many people even are aware of this. You guys, I've only been, like said, like really since 2014, getting into this. And uh, I'm going to tell you what little I do know, what little is from the Holy Spirit. It's not from me, because I would be blind as everybody if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. Holy angels opening me in my eyes. Uh, I'm new in this, you know, but uh, I know this. I'm just very grateful to have my eyes open. And uh, as Jesus said, if they wouldn't hear me, they won't hear you either. And so I, I understand for some reason they're not able to receive this. And uh, okay. I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country. See, these are those new cars I told you about. They're called Fort. I seen I was behind one the other day, Fort. When I read this stuff, it makes me think of that. I will bring them forth, and it's in the Bible 4,444 times. You know, why not 448 times, and 46 times, and 47 times? I will bring them forth out of the country where they soldier, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, Go ye, serve your serve ye every one his idols and hereafter also if you will not hearken unto me but pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts with your idols yeah you guys you see what I'm saying you know this is what this is what the Lord sees he sees everything that we're doing He sees everything that we're doing all the time. And he knows our hearts. That's why I read that first verse in Nahum 7. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows your hearts. He knows our hearts. You know? And he knows those that trust in him. This is how we're supposed to be right now in these times. Only trust in him. And uh, I'm going to put that link in the first comment about the, uh, that dust, you know, that dust that gets on people's mask, and then they breathe it through the second mask, and as, they, as it's being filtered through, it becomes graphene, okay? I'm going to provide that video, a uh, wake-up post of that, okay? And then, you know, like I said, I was up last night. I couldn't sleep because I just kept thinking about it, you know. And uh, then I got up and looked at the clock and I went, wow, three and a half hours went by. Couldn't sleep. And that's because I was thinking of this. This is what's coming down. Now that's why the government is telling people to put two masks on, one on top of the other. And then as it's being transferred through, it actually becomes stronger. And uh, that's how they make it do what it wants it to do. Now we know there. You heard that's what's going on that as well. You know now maybe the blood's doing something. The blood work that's now defiled is it's working doing something in there that we don't we're not aware of. But we know the Holy Spirit tells us to stay away from it. Okay. Now they're dropping it down in the powdered form and. It's also still doing things, you know. Harold said he's seen it all over his combine. And this is somebody every year gets out there with his tractor farming every year. And he keeps his combine washed and clean so he knows what he's talking about. It's different, okay. He knows. Now these people that sell these campers, they were asleep. They didn't know the time that we were in when we were sharing with them. But they knew about that black stuff on the kick. They were like, yeah, it's all of our campers. You know? 
just like these attacks I get. You know, I think it's got a lot to do with um, the things that we we're talking about all the time. You know, but we're we're edifying one another as we're told to do, and it is spiritual warfare. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but spiritual principalities. And you know, probably some of us more than others. You know, for different reasons. I don't know, but uh, only Christ knows. Anyhow, you guys, I'm heading down. I hope and pray that everybody out there receives a message from this. Be strong in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, you know, don't have a spirit of fear. I don't put this stuff up there to give you a spirit of fear about nothing. I'm breathing it. I'd rather just breathe this air for whatever it is and like it says no harm will come near you Psalms 91 it's not going to come near us we're protected you know I remember when I was on the road somebody did something to me a couple of times and I woke up early in the morning and I heard him on the phone with somebody saying can't do nothing to him he's got the hand of God on him you know there's nothing we can do to him and then I've had times where I woke up and I heard boom like a gun went off. Boom! Right behind my head. And, uh, and I, and I was, I like, wonder if that's what he did. When he tried to shoot me or something, you know? The word is true, you guys. No harm will come near you. Not that we put that to test. You don't put that to test. You know, you don't, because that's when you're testing God. You don't do that. You know? God has from the beginning. He knows what's going to happen. You know, and uh, everything. And then he even lets them know that they're, you know, Satan. He lets them know your time is up. Remember when the uh, demonic spirits came to Jesus and said, Are you here to torment us before our time? Before our time? To torment them? And I think I had a dream about poking one in the face. And in and, uh, and the dream it said, Sit down and buckle up. Other things are getting ready to start happening. You know, and to them, it's probably tormenting them because that's what they would want. You know, they were created and to do what they do. You know, that's their, that's what they do. God made everything, and He knows everything about every vessel He made, every spirit, everything that there is. That's why it says, with wisdom, get understanding. All right, you guys, I hope and pray everybody out there receives a message from this. We don't have a spirit of fear with this, anything. We just uh, we comfort, we edify one another, and just, you know, the, the uh, I heard this a lot while I was growing up. Now, today, I, and I heard it from my mother, and I think it was always a spirit that would entered into my mother and said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. You know, and my mom would say, do you remember when you said that all the time? You know, I said, I remember you saying it. But I don't remember saying it like that, you know? And she goes, oh yeah, you said it all the time, man. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. You know, so you guys, those of us, that we know who we are in Christ. Remember that. And we don't gloat in things, just be grateful that our names are written in the kingdom of heaven, you know? And we don't challenge these things. We just we move forward and trust in the Holy Spirit that abideth in us. Not us, but the Holy Spirit. Just like Michael, he didn't uh, dispute with Satan over the body of Moses. See, they would have made that into an idol, you know, and had people worshiping Moses' body if they knew where it was buried. Okay? God bless you guys. I love you. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior.